Okay. So, now we are going to invoke a different kind of an experiment to simplify the cross peak fine structure and this is called as cozy 45 or one can also use what is called as the E cozy. And cozy 45 is simply a modification from the cozy experiment. The cozy experiment has normally this sort of a sequence here T1, T2 and the cozy 45 means this angle is 45 degree, this flip angle is 45 degrees. This is 90 degree and this angle is 45 degrees. You can also use a smaller one, you can also use a 30 degrees and 40 degrees or whatever, but a smaller angle not 90 degree. What is the result of this? The result of this is the intensities in the multiplets, intensities in the uh, cross peak are altered are altered okay this, as a result what happens is you may not see all the components you will see some components and therefore you will see a better fine structure but the some intensities will go to zero therefore the cancellations will will be less and you will see a better fine structure in this cross peaks now you can see the number of components is almost reduced to half when we do this this sort of an experiment there so in this of course this will not be present there and this uh, one this is a 1 prime 2 prime peak here and these peaks are not present and you see this structure is reduced, this structure reduced number of components is reduced. You can compare this with the peak here, see the kind of a structure what we had in this here, see these ones are um, uh, more components here, but the many components are cancelled and when the components are cancelled you are not able to measure the coupling constants, but you need to get those coupling constants. So therefore you need to do extract those informations. Now we see you can see more components here in this because the cancellations are reduced because the intensities of the components are, are altered by this uh, use of this 45 degree flip angle for this pulse. Now we can see many more components here. Therefore you can do a simulation which will be which will allow you to extract this coupling constants. So once again you can go here and then of course you do not see the cross peak here as, as expected. Similarly, for the 1 prime to double prime peak, this is the 1 prime to double prime peak. Now we see the com this of course does not matter because of the 1 prime 2 prime coupling is not there, it is 0 and this structure remains the same. But most importantly you can see here the way these peaks which were earlier present in this area, this portion, they have been, they have been reduced to 0 intensity. Therefore, you do not see these peaks there and you will see better resolution within the fine structure. You will see 8 components here. Instead of the 16 components, you are seeing only 8 components and that is what is very clear. So once you have this 8 components, now you can actually measure these individual coupling constants very clearly. In this area, so in the all the C2 prime and all this corresponds to the C2 prime endogeometry area. This is the C3 prime endogeometry area. This one is a little bit more um, complex, but here it becomes much more clearer with regard to the components which are present there. So and this of course becomes similar to this here and the C2 prime endogeometry is very well characterized by this fine structure here. You can clearly see 4 here and a 4 there and these will be the plus minus plus minus and then you have the plus minus plus minus here and these ones are extremely useful for calculating the coupling constants. So this I will demonstrate to you in uh, certain other uh, things and similarly this one is now for the 2 double 2 prime 3 prime and 2 double prime 3 prime peaks. These are for the 2 prime 3 prime peak and these are for the 2 double prime 3 prime cross peaks. Now these are for the cozy 90, these are not for the cozy 45 and in this case all the components present we will not calculate this fine structure, it can be calculated in the same way as I indicated to you for the 1 prime 2 prime and the 1 prime 2 double prime cross peaks taking the splitting patterns of the individual nuclear individual protons and combining them with the splittings of the other ones you will calculate the structures here. So you see there are many cancellations depending upon the sugar geometry you will have different kinds of fine structures here. So one has to simulate these and all the peak patterns have to match at the same time. So once you choose a certain set of coupling constants, you not only must match the 1 prime, 2 prime, 1 prime, 2 double prime, must also match the 2 prime, 3 prime and 2 double prime, 3 prime fine structures. Then only you can be confident that your um, coupling constants calculations are correct. Okay. This is the same thing 2 prime, 3 prime peaks, how these fine structures are present in the individual as a function of the uh, pseudo rotation angle there. 
So, okay, this one cannot remember these ones, but whenever there is one faced with a particular situation, then you must this forms a database. Using this database, one can compare your experimental spectra with this and simulate this using this. Uh, of course, this software was written for uh, simulation purposes, and uh, so all this data is already published in progress in NMR, and those you can make use this as the database. You calculate this pattern and experimentally the experimental spectra you can compare and you can estimate the sugar geometries. Now this is for the 2 double prime, 3 prime, now this is for the cosy 45. In the cosy 45 you can see how these ones will change. So here you see for the cosy 45 to 2 prime, 3 prime peak this actually uh, looks much more simpler. In the 2 prime, 3 prime for the 2 prime, 3 prime coupling constant of course will be there because that is about 6 to 7 hertz. So you will see in the C3 prime endo domain also you will see that all these cross peaks 2 prime, 3 prime cross peaks will be present. 2 double prime, 3 prime peaks will not be present but the 2 prime, 3 prime peaks will be present. For the north region of course this will be present, all of these will be present and you can see this calculation that how the pattern happens this is in the cosy 45 and once you have that you can actually see how the pattern number of components is reduced, this resolution will allow you to estimate the coupling constants. And this is for the 2 double prime, 3 prime peak, the 2 double prime, 3 prime peak will not be present in the C2 prime endo geometry here because this is 2 double prime, 3 prime coupling is 0 at this in this domain in this whole area from here to here that coupling is 0 therefore you will not see this. You will only see for these and this is for the cosy 45, you can combine this with the cosy 40 experiment by and large it is better to simulate these ones than the cosy 90 because the number of components is relatively less. Therefore, you can obtain better dispersion of the multiple uh, components and calculate the structure. Okay. Now this is for the uh, 3 prime 4 prime peak. Now the 3 prime 4 prime peak, so you see in the C2 prime endo geometry region 3 prime 4 prime coupling is 0 in the um, C2 prime endo geometry. It is very strong in the C3 prime endo geometry that is in the northern region 3 prime 4 prime peak is very large. Therefore, you will see very strong cross peak this is for the cosy 90, this is not for cosy 45 and you will see only for these ones you will see a very strong peak. And the multi fine structures will here will depend upon 3 prime 4 prime coupling, 3 prime 2 prime coupling okay? and that is all the two couplings which are present. You can calculate the fine structures based on the coupling constant values. And of course, when you are calculating the 4 primes one has to take care of the fine structure of the 4 prime proton as well. The 4 prime proton has a fine structure because of the coupling with 4 prime, 3 prime, but it also has the fine structure with 4 prime, 5 prime, 5 double prime. Okay, one should remember that here. So 4 prime will have a fine structure due to uh, this is the 3 prime, 4 prime, but it will also have couplings to 4 prime, 5 prime. 4 prime, 5 prime. 4 prime 5 prime then you have 4 prime 5 double prime okay so plus 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 minus 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 so this will be 4 prime 5 double prime so therefore this see this has 8 components here therefore this structure will be very complex so this structure will be very complex along this axis all of that is not resolved and many of those ones will overlap finally you will see only this much the total width is uh, sort of the sum of the various coupling constants there. Therefore, within that you have these various um, fine structures plus minuses and you will see. Only thing you can see is that the 3 prime, 4 prime peaks are not present in the in this domain which is the C2 prime endo geometry. Okay. Now this is the cosy 45 experiment for this oligomer, for the experimental spectrum for this oligomer. Now you can see here the fine structures of the 1 prime these are the, the top ones are the 1 prime 2 prime peaks the corresponding bottom ones are the 1 prime 2 double prime okay now there are 2 1 prime 2 prime there are 2 nucleotides here and these ones are the corresponding 1 prime 2 double prime peaks this is the 1 prime 2 prime peak of one nucleotide this is the 1 prime 2 prime of another nucleotide and the corresponding 2 double primes are here okay you match the centers so this and this form a pair this and this form a pair and similarly in this area there is an overlap of 2 nucleotides. So there are 2 1 prime 2 prime peaks here and correspondingly the 2 1 prime 2 double prime peaks are present here but there is one more nucleotide here which is embedded into this area. This is overlap quite a substantial overlap of this here. 
Here again there is a quite a substantial overlap of the 1 prime 2 prime 1 prime 2 double prime peaks. This one is very clear there is a 1 prime 2 prime 1 prime 2 double prime 1 prime 2 prime 1 prime 2 double prime. Now you can see the better resolution because of the cosy 45 if you had taken this cosy 40 you would not have been able to dis separate out these ones components very clearly ok. So now you can use this to calculate. So once again here also you can see 2 here, 1 here and 1 there. This is 1, this is 2 and here there are 2. Now notice here this fellow the 1 prime 2 double prime peak is on the top, 1 prime 2 prime is down and this is because of the terminal one something is uh, this is identified and this pattern is very characteristic of the 1 prime 2 double prime peak. You can see that all in all of these places. But there is an extensive overlap of peaks here ok. Now we will see we will have to use different tricks to separate this out. We will see what to do there ok. But I just indicated the experimental example. Now this is an example which clearly shows using cosy 45 how one can identify the coupling constants. So you see the fine structures here what is present along this axis is the 1 prime multiplied ok this is 1 prime. The 4 components you have the 1 prime 2 prime coupling and 1 prime 2 double prime coupling. And what is this peak? This peak is my 1 prime 2 prime peak, this is my 1 prime 2 double prime peak ok. So you can see here the fine structure there are 8 components, there are 8 components here also 8 components here depending on the coupling constants what we have there and you can, the various coupling constants are indicated here. You have the 2 prime 2 double prime coupling indicated here and then the 1 prime 2 prime coupling indicated here. You measure the 1 prime uh, the, uh, 2 prime 2 double prime coupling along this axis and measure the 1 prime 2 prime coupling along this axis or 1 prime 2 double prime coupling along this axis. Also in this one you can measure the 1 prime 2 prime coupling which is 9.5 hertz this is the larger ok. And then this is the same 14.1 hertz is the 2 prime to double prime coupling is the same ok. So therefore you can determine 1 prime 2 double prime coupling, 1 prime 2 prime coupling and the 2 prime 2 double prime couplings all the 3 couplings one can measure from this uh, um, 2 cross peaks. So this is, is illustrated in this experimental uh, spectrum. This is a very beautiful spectrum and you can actually see the fine structures in these ones. <clears throat> okay. Now this is another experimental spectrum and then the simulated spectrum shown here for this one particular cross peak. The same spectra which I showed you earlier the big one and one particular cross peak of that one is this is the A5 nucleotide. A5 nucleotide that is this one here this is the phi and the one prime to double prime coupling of that. You see here this is the experimental spectrum and this is the simulator spectrum and the overlay on this perfectly overlapping and when you do that of course you can get the coupling constants very clearly ok. Now this is a, a complex here with a, some drug and you one can study what happens when the drug is binding whether there is a change in the sugar geometry as a result of the binding of a particular drug and so on. So this is a particular application to demonstrate that there is a change in the coupling, coupling constant the sugar geometry actually changes from C2 prime endo to C3 prime endo when this, this happens there ok. Now here are the simulations of the same spectrum which I showed earlier. So you remember this overlapping areas here. You remember the overlapping this was the way which was so many nucleotides are getting overlapped there. In the cosy 45 experimental spectrum there are 3 nucleotides here, 3 nucleotides there C1, C13 and this contains both of the H2 prime, H2 double prime cross peaks all of them are present in this area ok. Now one could simulate this, this could only by simulation you can extract this coupling constant. You just vary these different parameters there how many coupling constants are present you can actually vary those coupling constants and simulate this to match this perfectly. So this is the wonderful demonstration of how to extract the coupling constants by simulations ok. Now and these are the little simpler ones you have the T8 and T7 there are 2 nucleotides here these are the 1 prime 2 prime peaks uh, and then this is the T7. Uh, uh, experimental spectrum and the simulated spectrum and these are identical and you can may confidently determine the coupling constants. Now here there is an overlap of C1 and C13 here. 
to 1 prime 2 prime peaks are overlapping in this area and at see you look at that the way the chemical shifts are and the coupling constants are the patterns are looking different. So this one of course now we simulate it perfectly to get this coupling constants from there. Okay. Now that is so much for using the cosy and the cosy 45. But now you get into even more difficulties of course that is that the simulation was done fine. But can we do something more? Well, so we said that we have this coupling information, a redundant coupling information along both the frequency axis. We have the coupling information along the F2 axis as well as the H1 axis. For example, the H1 prime coupling is present along H1 prime H2 prime coupling is present along the two axis and the chemical shifts may uh, overlap. Therefore, what we do is here we use a decoupling technique. Decoupling technique, this is constant time, constant time cosy. We had discussed this during the methods. So what happens is this will result in decoupling along F1 axis. Therefore, in this now you do not see the splitting along the F1 axis at all. You only have couplings along the F2 axis, along the F, uh, F, this is the F2 axis. H1 prime is the F2 axis, this is my F1 axis if I am looking at that. Therefore, you do not see the splittings along this axis. Therefore, this simplifies the cross peak fine structures much more as a result of which you can uh, measure this coupling also relatively better and if there are overlaps of the peaks that also will get resolved. Okay. These are the simulations for the sugar, different sugar geometries how it happens and once again for the 1 prime 2 prime there will be no peak here because this is the C3 prime endo geometry for the 9 uh, third, these are all C3 prime endo domain and 1 prime 2 prime coupling is 0 there you will not see as you start increasing it starts picking up numbers and you will see the highest intensities in this area for this particular peak 1 prime 2 prime and once again it will be 0 here. And this is for the 1 prime 2 double prime once again this one is smaller here because this coupling constant is not that large as compared to the 1 prime uh, 2 prime coupling. But you can see the 4 components a little bit better here because the relative intensities are different and that will allow you to measure the individual coupling constants in this. Because you, what you see here is the fine structure of the H1 prime alone along this axis you do not have. The H1 prime has is what it is a doublet of a doublet. It has 2 couplings 1 prime to 2 prime and 1 prime to 2 double prime. So you can see the 4 components here. Although there is some cancellation in the middle in this area that is why the central peaks have lower intensity but nonetheless you can actually calculate uh, measure the separations you get an idea as to what they will be. They may not be precise but you will get the precise values after the simulations. Okay, now this is for the 2 prime 3 prime in the same area for the same for entire region of the sugar geometries. So these form a database all of these simulations form a database for the this is again F1 decoupled cosy, this is constant time cosy, constant time cosy or this is also called as F1 decoupled cosy. So you will only see the fine structure of, of the uh, what is present along this axis, you won't see the cross fine structure here. So the, this will show the fine structure of the 2 prime proton. The 2 prime proton has what couplings? It has a 2 prime 3 prime, 1 prime 2 prime and 2 prime 2 double prime. So it has those 3 coupling constants there and this will be 8 components there but of course all of them are not sufficiently resolved so but you can see 4 components there this ones okay. And uh, so you can see better representation of this more components here, here actually you see more components there okay see so same as to here. It should be 8 components you see actually see 8 of them there because the relative intensities they you can see this uh, separate them better here but the intensities become more then of course they tend to merge and then you will start seeing this sort of a pattern. Now this is the same spectrum which I showed you earlier uh, of the same molecule which was let me show you uh, a corresponding one I will go back and show you that this is constant time cosy. This spectrum is of the same one as this one. This is the same region. It is the same region of uh, the same molecule with the constant time cosy. 
See now you can see all of them are so well resolved. The ones which are present here every one of them is one 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 line. So 2 prime to a double prime correspond you can also figure out which are which two are in the line. So this corresponds to this, this corresponds to this. So you can see you can draw the lines. Now you see here that there are two overlapping which were they are very complex. Now you see here there are two nucleotides here G2 and G12 and they are both the 2 prime to double prime they are both present here they are all overlapping and the G9 2 prime and 2 double prime peaks are also overlapping there. And we since we removed the coupling constant along the, this axis they have become now one line here and one line there. So similarly here for the G12 one line there one line down another G2 one line here one line there. So each one of them is giving you one one line is right. So this is one line here one line there and the correspondingly one line here and one line there and similarly this one one line here one line here one line here and one line here. So that will allow you to figure out how many peaks are overlapping. So even in such a complex situation by doing this constant time cozy you are able to separate out these various components then you can actually simulate these to calculate the coupling constants. Okay. Now this is the 2, two, double, two prime to double prime 3 prime cross peak region. This is the extremely complex area, extremely complex area. Look at the overlaps here. Therefore, this you could not have analyzed without the F1 decoupling. This is again a constant time cozy. This is again a constant time cozy or also called as F1 decoupled cozy and you see this area, so how complex it is. If you had the coupling constant information here, this would have been impossible to analyze. If you had the coupling information along this axis as well, you would not have been able to separate out the, all of these components. So now we can see clearly three lines, one, two, three, and that is a blow up here. So similarly, there are two lines here, the T7, T8, they are so close, and similarly C1, C3, these ones are again G2, G12, which you saw earlier also in the case of 1 prime, 2 prime, 2 double prime as well. So therefore, by now by doing this, you are able to figure out the individual uh, patterns, uh, chemical shifts and the individual coupling constants. You have to be able to measure all of these coupling constants at the same time, then only you will have the confidence in those ones. Now you see these are the simulations, having obtained those experimental spectra, now to generate where there are overlaps, you will have to re resort to the simulations. So you have this experimental spectrum here the 1 prime to double 2 prime to double prime are overlapping here in this okay and that one is uh, distinctly seen this was of the g6 residue which was there below and 1 prime 2 prime to double prime and this is the 2 prime 3 prime of the same residue so using the same coupling constants you must be able to fit all the cross peak fine structures the 1 prime 2 prime to double prime so you have the 2 prime here and the 2 double prime here 2 prime there 2 double prime there and then you measure this um, uh, fit the all the coupling constants and get the fine structure. This is the 2 prime 3 prime. Now in this case experimental okay now experimental and simulated once again you perfectly generate the uh, simulations to get this uh, individual 2 nucleotides overlapping even so you could get the coupling because you have one line each along both along the uh, vertical along this axis and you have the fine structures along along this axis. Therefore, you can measure these coupling constants quite clearly. You can, yeah. So you can see here this one and this one and this one and this one. These two belong to G2. Uh, top one belongs to G2 and this one belongs to G12. So therefore, you can actually measure this and separate the coupling constants. Okay. That is so much for the sugar geometry. Okay. Now we turn to the one of the torsion angles along the um, uh, backbone and that is epsilon torsion angle the c3 prime o3 prime torsion angle in the along the uh, backbone and this actually is quite restricted how do we know this is restricted you do determine this by there is no measurable parameter here to find out this coupling constant nmr parameter uh, although you can sometimes you can use the p31 spectra and here you also determine this by energy calculations you calculate the energy of the system for a particular dinucleotide and what are the favorable uh, uh, energies, what is the most stable state. It turns out that when you do this that you have the lowest energy for this epsilon torsion angle is around 270 degree and here you have 
a very nice uh, minimum here with very small energy and as you go anywhere if you go away from there the energy goes up very rapidly. If the energy is like this it is very unlikely that these will get populated in any normal situations. Therefore, by and large when you are actually calculating you generally consider only this value or this value for the epsilon torsion angle. When you build the models for the structure calculations then you will have to use these sort of constraints. You therefore what constraints do you use? First of all you have the assignments and then you have energy values here for the epsilon torsion angle and the sugar geometry determined from the coupling constants that is that forms the input for the structure calculations and we have not yet come to the distances we will use the distances that will form a particular part from the nosy is the ultimate finally for to calculate the structure because you have the various interproton distances which we measured and that is the one which we are going to use for structure calculations. This will form I guess uh, we will go that into the next, next class. So here so let me summarize once more we had the uh, first of all we obtained the assignments using the nosy and based to 1 prime connectivities based to 2 prime to double prime connectivities and then from 1 prime to 2 prime to double prime connectivities and then we analyze in the cosy spectrum the fine structures in the cross peaks of one of the sugar ring 1 prime 2 prime to double prime 2 prime 3 prime 3 prime 4 prime and we saw how there is a distinct pattern of cross peaks depending upon the sugar geometry with that we uh, get a well idea about the sugar geometry constraints this we have to use for the structured calculation uh, which we will take up in the next class.